Hello, hello. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. We're waiting for a few folks to come on. Are we are. So Tony, we're oh, here's Lori, fantastic. And Michael and uh, Javier will uh, walk us through today, is that it? Fantastic. I wanna welcome everyone for joining us today. I think Lori, Javier and Michael Wilkinson will walk us through our platform. I just wanna welcome you to ExoLab 9, our mission to the International Space Station. Heading up to the end of the month, a lot of exciting things to do. We have professional development all week long at 30 minute sessions. I know school's underway for some of you. Uh, and it's a little complex trying to manage our times and schedules. So all of this will be recorded so you can view it as you're, at your leisure a little later on. And of course, we're always available if you have any questions. Remember one final thing before I turn it over to Lori and the rest of the crew, when you log into the uh, classroom at classroom.magnitude.io, at the lower right-hand corner, there's a wonderful little help button that answers many questions you might already uh, uh, have uh, and, and or ability to reach out to us if you have further questions beyond of the scope of the future frequently asked questions. So that uh, I'll turn it over to Lori and uh, welcome Lori, it's all yours. You're muted, Lori. You're on mute there. And there I was we totally go. Mute while I was on mute, there you go. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you everyone for joining us this evening as we get acquainted uh, with the platform. So uh, our mission and goal tonight is to uh, show you how to navigate through the platform in setting up your class, as well as working through assigning lessons. Uh, now tonight's session specifically, we are going to be showing the method if you are not a Google Classroom user. We are integrating Google Classroom onto the platform, and so that is going to have a different setup. Uh, initially when you log in and when you set up your classes. So tonight's demonstration is if you are not going to use that system. And then next week, our professional development um, regarding the, the use of the platform is going to then focus on the Google Classroom users. So um, if you are a Google Classroom user, please still stick around. You may uh, still find it useful um, to walk through some of the um, pieces of the um, platform when it comes to assigning the lessons. So I'm Lori Waters. I'm the Vice President for Learning Experiences um, at Magnitude IO. And uh, tonight we're joined by um, Javier as well. He's one of our principal investigators. Javier, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Oh, Javier, can you hear me? Yes, uh, I think there I was... Go. Frozen. Yes, I'm glad to be here. I'm Javier Montiel. I am one of the principal investigators in this uh, journey. I'm glad to be with you today, guys. Uh, I worked last year as a bilingual kindergarten teacher. This year is going to be a new challenge as a second grade. So I know how to implement this platform with small kids. So thank you for having me. Wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you uh, so that you can see the, um, oh, maybe Tony has to turn on screen sharing. For some reason, I don't have that ability. <laughs> I just saw him running in. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Very good. Thank you, Tony. There we go. All right. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, wonderful. So uh, you're going to start by, um, again, if you're not a Google Classroom user, you're going to receive an email that has a username um, in it so that you can start your initial account. And so those are going to be the login credentials that you use to log in at classroom.magnitude.io. And so this is our uh, login page that you will come to. Um, you can use those sign-in credentials to uh, sign in. And then you're going to be brought to your dashboard. 
Um, minimize that. There we go. And so let's walk through a few features of what you're going to find on the platform. Over here on the left-hand side is where we have our navigation bar. And you can always come back and reach this page by the dashboard. The next, we have the lessons library. And those will have uh, the lessons for the products that you have. So here today, we're focusing on Exolab. You'll have lessons that you have specifically created or cloned, and you will show you how to do that. There's the notes section where students will, you'll have your own notes that you've taken or student notes, the uh, classes that you'll set up, and then the experiment is where the Exolab page is. So let's begin by looking at the lesson library for Exolab. In general, the lessons are going to be organized currently by grade range in columns. So as best we can, we are going to keep the K to two lessons in the left-hand column, then three to five, upper elementary, middle school, six to eight, and high school, nine to 12, all the way on the right. So we try to have as many companion lessons as we can that are grade level appropriate for each age range. More lessons are being added to the platform, so you will see some changes uh, in the coming weeks as we add new content. We have many uh, principal investigators on our team who are just phenomenal STEM educators, and they are working on adding more fun activities and ways that you can extend uh, to learn about um, and assign to your classes. So let's just take a quick look um, at uh, a couple of the lessons and how you can work through using these. Uh, you can use them entirely as they are currently uh, written, or you can make some modifications. So let's start here with an introduction to uh, science on the space station. So in space, we have um, just a very simple introduction for students to understand um, the, the process of how science is done on the ISS. We try to integrate uh, a pre-assessment in each of the lessons to gauge what students already know. So you're seeing the teacher side currently where it's gonna go, go ahead and give you the answers on the multiple choice questions. And then there's both multiple choice and essay type questions. And you can modify these um, sections as well um, when we clone a lesson. So we can walk through a little bit of the background in history. Um, and then um, the, some of them have videos integrated in as well. Um, but let's go ahead and say you want to assign this lesson, but you found a, a really neat piece of content that you wanted to add. So what you would do as the teacher is then click clone. You would give it a new name, intro to space, and I'll put my initial with it. And then I clone it. And then it, the title it has a new name. And um, now it's going to appear in my lessons. Um, it may be down here at the bottom. I've created a number of lessons. <laughs> so that's where you will now find it for the ones that you specifically created and cloned. Now that you have a cloned lesson, you can open up the lesson settings and you can amend each, each section. So say I have additional standards that I wanted to add, I can open up that section, or I wanna change the objectives. Or let's say for instance, even here with the standard section, um, if I just wanna make that teacher view only, then I'm the only one that's going to see that. Um, and rather than the students. But maybe, yes, I would do want them to see, still see the objective. So I'll leave that so that everyone can view it. And then um, the uh, questions can be amended or you can add questions. So you can modify it to make other choices uh, in the multiple choice. You can add new types of questions. So say, you know, how long have humans occupied and conducted research on the ISS? 
do know the answer to that question, maybe type it into the chat. How long have we been conducting research with humans on the ISS? Okay. And then that question has been added. So then when students complete these questions, you'll be able to see their responses. The multiple choice will self grade, um, but obviously with the open response, uh, you have to go through and, and read their uh, answers because there's not always just one correct answer. Sometimes they give um, claims, evidence and reasoning to support what, what they have written. So those are some ways that you can clone a lesson, add content, um, and if you want to create just a brand new section, let's say we have an extension, right? You know, uh, we're going to spell correctly. Um, we want to add another project in here to um, to watch for the ISS at night. You know, you you can use an app. Um, many of them are available, so. Let's see how that shows up. And now it's at the bottom here. So a lot of different ways that you can add content. Um, if you want to add within these sections, uh, tables, bullet points, um, you can add pictures, you can add video, uh, insert media into it. So all these tools are available to you uh, to add additional content for your students. So now we're ready to assign it to our class. And um, actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and take a look at classes, and then we'll come back and assign it to one that we set up. So if I'm going to start new and I want to create a new class, I've gone to classes and I went to the bottom that said create class, and then I'm going to have our PD class, right? And we're Six because it's 6 p.m. and all of you are really advanced. We're going to call you 10th graders. And so we'll hit save. And now we've got a specific class page for our particular class. An easy way for you to be able to have students join this class will be sharing this link, the student sign up URL here, and then you'll give them the class code very similar to like a Google Classroom type approach where they would have a, a code to, to join the class. Uh, and then um, we'll get to our experiment uh, in just a couple moments. And so when we, um, I can manually add students as well, or they can join by using that class code. So I'll put, um, I'll put my son in here. I'll give him a, a fake email. Okay. Um, I don't necessarily need the student ID and, or I can also um, create my student class list using the CSV files if you have um, that. So if I create my student, I can now add him um, to my class and now I can return to my class and there is my student. If I want to edit my assigned students, um, you can sort them by the grade level that you put them in, and then um, you can update them. Okay. So this is how you would use um, set up your initial class if you are not using Google Classroom. Uh, if we now want to assign a lesson to this class, I can go back to the My Lessons that I created a cloned lesson, and now I can assign it to this particular class. I can change um, the start and end date if I want to give them uh, more time as to when the assignment is due, and I hit assign. And now it shows up here in uh, the class. Uh, once a student starts working on assignments, you would click student notes to see their comments, uh, and then you'll also see their responses. Um, the assign experiment is, um, Ted, did you cover that in the hardware um, setup? today. Uh, it's good to maybe recover it again. Just to All right. Up. Very good. So if we're going to assign an experiment, I've got one already set up. 
with my exo lab. Um, so I'm comparing one to uh, uh, one of the flights in New York. Um, let's see, if I go to, this one's actually ready to, um, to be finished. I can set up a edit. generic one if you want, Lori. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and end this experiment anyway because um, my, my poor little plants dried out. <laughs> so I can show you how to start up a new one. So when we get to our experiments, um, our ExoLab page, see if I do it this way. And now I'm going to, ex oh, no, I don't wanna do it that way. I'll go to start experiment off ExoLab. We'll do it that way since I had this prior one running. So when we start our experiment off the ExoLab tab, again, I was down here at the bottom where it says ExoLab. I hit create my experiment. I'm now gonna select which one I'm going to pair to. Now there's not one currently on the ISS. When we did ExoLab I8 ISS, then that's what this was labeled. We've got ground trials running right now. And so that's the one I'm going to pair to is uh, Michael Wilkinson's in, uh, in New York and we'll compare to his. And I'll enter a new one. So this is my August ground trial for PD. I'm gonna have today's the start date. I wanna keep the experiment um, public. I'm going to choose my device. This will be using the dual tubes, test tubes. And then I'm going to select my uh, colors. So in this one, I'm going to run um, magenta in the left and white light in the right. So you can choose from red, blue, green, magenta, and white. I'm gonna keep my photo intensity uh, at 10 and I'm gonna keep my photo period at 16. So that'll mean that the lights will be on for 16 hours and then they'll be off for eight hours. When uh, the ExoLab takes an image, then that light will, um, it'll flash white light actually while it's taking the image. But then after that process is done, it will revert back to the color that you assign to it. And then very simply you hit save experiment. Lori, can I just make a quick point? Absolutely. So in preparation for this mission coming up, the preset uh, uh, lighting is probably the most recommended. If you do want to run variations, you can, although if you want to compare across the entire network, it might be good to keep consistent. But it's definitely opened up for you to experiment and explore if you want to think about how light wavelength of light might affect plant growth. And of course, you can always run a mission like we're doing right now. Uh, Lori's just synchronized with a ground trial. We do the ground trials for many different reasons to make sure we've got the right uh, composition for our agar medium, that the lighting is not too, uh, uh, too elongated, just a lot of different things that we do during our ground trials in preparation for a mission. So you're welcome to do that at any time before, during, or after a mission. Lori, back to you. Great. So um, I set this experiment up here on the platform. What I would typically recommend is completely get your test tubes, um, everything loaded into it so that it's ready to go. So that when it takes this first image, um, which will then a few minutes later get added to the platform, then your device is completely set up. So we um, have the protocols in uh, on the platform here in a lesson for you. Um, we have both the student lab kit uh, demonstration set up as well as the ExoLab itself uh, and the exact protocols that we anticipate using. There might be uh, very slight amendments to those, uh, if there's any last minute changes before we get to launch day, but for the most part, the exact way that we're gonna set it up. And under the middle school, high school version, in fact, we list out all of the materials and give the students all the details of the experimental um, setup so that they could even help um, do it while in the classroom. So that um, will be the process for setting up your exo lab uh, with both the the experiment and then setting it up on the platform. You'll do those steps. Uh, let me give um, Javier an opportunity um, to jump in here, especially since he is working with younger students and um, hit any highlights on um, how he anticipates uh, 
the uh, interacting with the platform may be unique for those lower elementary grades. Javier? Yes, uh, thank you. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I joined the team and I was in charge to develop this these, um, curriculum for K to, to second grade students. So my one of the biggest problems that we have, especially in lower elementary, is that the students cannot type and they're, uh, they're not used to, to uh, any online environment. So I came with the idea that instead of uh, assigning the, the, the lessons to the students, the students will gonna have a manual that, that teachers are gonna follow through and then they can teach that uh, lesson to the students. And to accompany that, I have here the, the, the manual for the students. They are about 25, uh, so, sorry, 29 uh, pages full of uh, curriculum and material. I have here, uh, this is the, the front cover and over here you can put the, the patch. Uh, I think we're gonna provide you with uh, some, uh, some stickers for your, for your students. So the students are gonna have this in case you wanna put it in, in your binder so you can uh, have access to, to, the, to the material. So this is for you to have. Uh, we um, Javier, just real quick, we're seeing your dashboard of the platform. I think you were trying to show the image of the um, manual that you had, right? Yes. Um, okay. Early a, just a different share. So I think they changed a little bit the, the setup. Can you see now? Yes. Okay. Great. So this is the, the front cover. So over here, you're going to have the, you can put the, the sticker of the, of the mission and you can have that in front of your binder in case you wanna, you wanna use that. We have some, uh, some line paper in case some of this is um, uh, short for the students that are already writing because uh, as I was telling you, one of the most important things for us as uh, scientists, especially in early elementary, is a hand and paper and pencil experience. So that's something that I would like to highlight as part of my uh, professional experience that students are gonna have uh, these, um, these skills built in this, uh, in this unique experiment on, on, on board the International Space Station. This is part of the uh, language and vocabulary development. So uh, what you are gonna do in order for you to know what page is going to be assigned to your students here in the lessons. You're going to find the uh, K to second grade band. And over here is mostly for you to have like, uh, like uh, as a, as a teacher. So over here we have the, the, the topic, the materials, the vocabulary. This vocabulary is the one that you're gonna put uh, in one of the, of the papers that we have. So, so the students can, ha can have reference back to the, to, the, to the same vocabulary. We have a couple of uh, videos for you to show to the students as well. These are some of the preparation materials that you're gonna have in case you're, from, in, you're new and not very familiar, familiar to the ExoLab family and the platform. This is the former uh, knowledge that, that the students might already have, how to engage the students, uh, the video that, that's gonna be helping you with that objective. And this is the Explore. Explore is actually the actual lesson. So this is for you to have because the students at uh, this grade level, sometimes in kindergarten, uh, the students won't be able to read this, especially at the beginning of the school year. So this is for you to have, so you can have um, the materials and this is uh, some, some of the pictures that you can have here. You have the sample of the, of the worksheets and some information. Uh, also, 
these uh, materials are probably, I think they're, they are 11 lessons. Some of them are core lessons and some of them are enrichment. So you can probably kind of pick and choose the ones that you would like to explore with your students. And for that, in our next session, we're gonna be talking about which lessons are core and which lessons are for enrichment. And similarly, we've done that with the um, upper elementary, middle school and high, high school lessons as well. Especially since we're starting at the beginning of the year, uh, giving teachers a lot of options on where you wanna start. If it's just focusing on scientific inquiry, then you can just work on the lessons with that and bring in the content lessons uh, as you have time. I think we are uh, nearing our, our half hour here. So let's go ahead and open up for discussions or any questions that you might have in wanting to know how to use the Magnitude platform. Yes. Hi. How are you, Laurie? Um, Very good. Uh, so we're new to it here in Beaumont, and I, I have at least a principal and a teacher in the room, and I'm very glad for a teacher that actually explained it, it from his perspective. I just wanted to ask, um, because we're new, would there be an anxiety level, or do I need to go in and support them from a biological perspective, or can, or can they just learn as they go? I mean, obviously, for science, we're okay with mistakes and learning. I just maybe you could elaborate on that because we can tend to talk very scientific and even I heard the word agar and I'm like, will somebody know what that is? That is right. Uh, so that is a great question. And actually we'll have another PD session this week specifically about mentors and sister classrooms. This is something that we heard from the last mission that as new teachers were getting started that there was a little bit of that anxiety about the unknown of how to do it. So our principal investigators and some of our educators who have been around for a long time have agreed to mentor the new teachers so that they will have a go-to person. So we'll have a Google form that um, your new folks can fill out and say, I want a go-to person, a mentor, so that when I have these kinds of questions, someone to ask. Obviously, Ted, Tony, Michael, and I, Javier, we are always available to take questions and pop into a Zoom meeting or respond to emails if someone has a quick question or need clarification. But we definitely know that it's helpful to have uh, that mentor as well and to learn along together. And mistakes are totally okay. <laughs> we still make them. Um, but we definitely want um, to assist anyone uh, with getting started on this exciting project with us. Mina, what grade are you in? Um, I'm not in a grade at the moment, <laughs> uh, but I um, am at the district level. So I have teachers that we're doing it in five classrooms, three in an elementary, hopefully one in a middle or high school. But if they don't pick it up, we'll give it to the elementary. And then next year, the hope is that people will be so excited that we just kind of offer it to anyone that wants it. So that was a great question. <laughs> So at least a fifth grade and um, a third grade teacher so far. Wonderful. Oh, and, and our district office is going to do it too. And, and we're gonna integrate it with our principals so that they, so we can have a conversation around it. So we're giving them, my hope is to give them access and conversation around the next generation science standards where it's a living learning experience from our perspective. And then we can talk about it as well. Well, that's awesome. Point you know, one point. thing, Dr. Mina, is uh, the, the different PDs we have going on this week and next week actually will focus on elementary or middle or high school. And so you can go on there. And as uh, I think the rest of the team has, has relayed, we're more than happy to schedule some time if we need a little extra care in preparation for pre-launch or during in-flight operations. What's really fun is when we get together once a week during the live operation to share the excitement or the interest 